All right, <clears throat> how's everybody doing? Um, F Class John uh, just produced a video. Uh, does cleaning brass primer pockets matter? Um, and I'm glad that John is doing this um, because I actually did this test two years ago. I uh, used a 6BR cartridge. Uh, if you're familiar with 6BR, it's a pretty small cartridge. Uh, I could pack usually about 32 grains of N135 in there. And uh, for this particular setup that I use for the primer pocket cleaning test, I used a 68 grain bullet in, in pretty much a zero free bore. Um, that's, that's the best free bore for if you want to shoot a 6BR with a really small bullet. Um, used a 14 twist rifle and a bench gun shooting at 100 yards. And what I did is I shot, I basically simulated an entire day of shooting like a match, shooting an entire match. And I shot, you know, five shot groups with clean primer pockets and then five shot groups with dirty primer pockets and basically just shot several groups, had plenty of statistical power to analyze the data. And there was no difference. The aggregate for uh, clean and dirty was the same. Uh, and it was a pretty small aggregate. It was about what the aggregate I get from this 6BR, which is usually in the low twos. And a periodic, you know, one five shot, a periodic five shot group in the ones. Uh, sometimes a zero here and there, but that's pretty hard uh, with with this for some reason. But definitely, uh, was it was a great shooting rifle. Still have it actually, and use it um, uh, when when there's a lot of wind conditions here for 100 200 yard bench rest. Um, in fact, used it last year and won uh, won the couple of aggregates with it. Um, over the over the entire field of six PPCs. But anyway, all that aside, um, John did the test in a clear as day. If you could see this. We are ready to do our primer oh, pocket how do I... I have uh, clean primer pockets, unclean primer pockets. We've got my Borden Dima March set up here. Uh, you can see I've got it in my Neo X rest. Every time... Okay, so as you can see, it's a Borden action. A Dima F class stock um, in that Neo in that Seb rest, which is this is a typical F class rig and F class setup. The cartridge, I believe, was a 6 PRC or 6 5 PRC. Don't quote me, but the cartridge size is almost double the size of a 6 BR. It's 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 definitely a lot bigger. So he's pushing, you know, he's putting a lot more powder in there. Uh, much larger bullet than you would see like this one is was pushing a 68 grain <laughs> six millimeter that one's I don't know I I didn't get hear it but probably over 140 grains in there and then he's packing in a lot more powder because that cartridge has got a lot more volume in it anyway just just wanted to mention a much larger cartridge in a rifle that is very different than the bench rest rifle that I shot my test in Okay. Do a video. People ask what's in there, so I always tell people. Uh, we have an electronic target. I'm the target down on the right. So now he shot an electronic target, which I think are fine, and he shot um, at 300 yards. I shot at 100. So once again, um, well, I'll, let's just jump to the results. His results were the exact same as mine. He did not find any uh, significant difference in the ballistics. Or in the precision, with a 20 shot group like that. he was shooting twenty shot groups. I shot several five shot groups. So, um, he, and he and he shot a handful of twenty shot groups um, with both clean and dirty. He basically found no difference in precision, no difference in ballistics. So, just want to highlight this because I get questions often with my testing, like, "Oh, you're testing in a bench rest rifle that has that doesn't generalize to other disciplines." Well, I, it, I'm actually finding that it does quite often, in fact. So things like this, like F-Class John taking an F-Class rifle, a much larger cartridge, shooting at 300, show the same results as me with a bench rest rifle uh, with a real small cartridge shooting only at 100. So um, it just, just, just keep that in mind as you start wondering, like, oh, does this apply to me or... Can I use this data to further inform the way I shoot? I shoot a totally different discipline. 
Um, yes, you probably can. I, I would say likely it is. Unless there is something fundamentally different about your rifle. Like I have shot... Um, uh, well, I've shot railgun rifles before. Yes, those are fundamentally different than a bag gun. Anything you shoot like out of a railgun is not likely to generalize to a bag gun. <laughs> so um, there are some applications that I believe are considerably different um, and that probably result in different, uh, probably different effects of different things. Um, or just no effect because you you know, whatever, whatever, uh, rig that you're using just will not show that effect. Uh, like a hunting rifle, for example, may, may show a real small effect on something, but, uh, it's probably just super limited by the, you know, by a factory type barrel or something, um, or an action that's not true, you know, so there's going to be certain applications that just aren't going to demonstrate the effect. But anyway, all this to say, um, thanks to F Class John for doing this test. Um, I'll post the link uh, here of the test that I did. I think I did this test two years ago on a 6BR. And just, you know, and just another uh, piece of evidence and data that shows that, yes, these results do generalize. Um, uh, again, do they generalize to every single application out there? No. If the application is very different, then probably not. But if it's very similar, then yes, you would expect the effects that are found in these things to, to generalize. So anyway, um, and this is not just F-Class John. I mean, I get, you know, messages on my phone, uh, email, all kinds of people sending me, you know, hey, I did this test. I, you know, someone emailed me about the case head thickness test, basically found the exact same thing, you know. Six, seven thousandths variation in case head thickness can lead to anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 feet per second difference, you know. Um, so it's not just stuff that's online like F Class John, which I appreciate him putting this online and putting it out there for everyone to consume and look at. Um, but, you know, sometimes I just I get emails from people that, that you know, are like, here's here's the results of my test. They're not necessarily, you know, on YouTube or published anywhere, but it's great to see those. And it's great to see that, oh, yeah, it, it seems like, you know, these findings are generalizing. All right, everyone, take care. Hope you have a good one.